Fred's release date from prison was supposed to be June 24th. Rose took the girls to go visit him. And this would be the last time that Fred would see Charmaine. And it's not like Fred came home and was upset. He was like, whatever, I don't really care. She's not my daughter. And so he ended up burying her in their backyard, close to their back door. So this is Frederick Walter Stephen West. Growing up, Fred had six children in his family and Fred was his mother's favorite child. Fred definitely had a sick and twisted relationship with both of his parents, but he loved them in many ways. His father was named Walter Stephen West, and he was a very violent and abusive man. In fact, a lot of people think that he may have even been a killer himself. He had this outlook on life that you are on the planet to take advantage of everyone and everything you can, and he really taught this concept to Fred. He actually specifically taught him that you can do whatever you want as long as you get away with it. And Fred really hung on to that his whole life. So one of the things that makes this case very disturbing is it involves a lot of incest. Walter made it pretty clear to Fred that if you don't take advantage of a woman and you had the opportunity to do so, then you are stupid, that you are weak. His mother's name was Daisy. Daisy was a very old fashioned woman very strict. According to Fred, she was really the ruler of the household, even more so than his father was. His mother was also a very sick individual, really crossed the line with Fred several times. But again, he has somewhat of a good relationship with them and was a mama's boy. Fred's childhood was traumatic in many different ways. He was also forced to confront the idea of death at a pretty young age. And this was said to be very scarring on Fred, but it also intrigued him. Fred thought that all those things that he'd experienced, he grew up thinking that these things were normal and that they were somehow okay. And also the fact that he was taught to take advantage of anything and anyone that he could. And part of what made Fred West so dangerous is he came across as a somewhat charming and charismatic person. Before all this, there was no signs of obvious character flaws to the average person who didn't know what he was doing in his personal life. And that's what made him really, really scary. So then we need to talk about Rose West. Rosemary Pauline Letts. And Rose's mom was a very, very damaged person. She had severe depression most of her adult life. And at one point while she was pregnant with Rose, she got ECT therapy. ECT stands for electroconvulsive therapy and it's known as electroshock therapy. It's a psychiatric treatment where seizures are purposefully induced in a patient. And since they did this while Daisy was pregnant, Rose ended up having all kinds of issues. When she was a baby, there were signs that something was just not right. Her mom even gave her the nickname of Dozy Rosie because she was showing signs of neurological damage. So clearly they didn't take it very seriously. She didn't get much help. She had several developmental delays and a lot of her brain was just abnormally developed. She didn't feel things like shame, guilt, compassion. Rosemary's father, Bill, had schizophrenia and he also had very violent mood swings and would really take it out on his daughter. During her childhood, Rose's mother's depression continued on and just got worse and worse over the years. Eventually she was at the point where she just wasn't spending any time with the family. And so Rose really turned to her father to fill that role of loving parent in her life, but in a very sick and twisted way. They had a bizarre, relationship. And so she learned from a young age that that's what you do in life. You use your body as a tool to get what you want. When she was a teenager, Rose's parents did finally separate. And when she was 16, she moved in with her father permanently. So in 1962, Fred met his first wife. She was a Scottish woman named Catherine Costello, but she went by the name Rena. Rena was already pregnant at the time that she met Fred. They also decided to get married mostly out of convenience so that she could stay in England. And then in 1963, Rena had this baby and they named her Charmaine. Not long after Charmaine was born, they had another daughter. This time, this was Fred's actual biological daughter and her name is Anna Marie West. So then in 1964, Fred decided to get a job and guess what he ended up being? Fred decided that he was gonna be an ice cream man all of our worst nightmares. Fred West as a 
an ice cream man. So Fred was cruising around in his ice cream van, creeping on kids. Who knows what else he did in his time as an ice cream man. During this time that he met Anne McFall. She was a younger woman and Fred grew close with her pretty quickly. So Fred continued as an ice cream man into 1965 and one day he ended up accidentally hitting a four year old boy. Now this was an accident as far as we know. He killed this little boy and he was in no way convicted or held responsible in any way. So just again, reinforcing that idea that you can do anything you want as long as you get away with it. In December of 1965, Fred decided that he was going to leave Glasgow, leave Rena, and take his children with him back to Much Markle. This is when Anne McFall really came into the picture and the two of them became really close. And within months, she became pregnant. But eventually, Rena crashes the party and came home. And this was unfortunate for Fred because he had been hiding that he had a pregnant girlfriend living with him. So he decided that he had to hide Anne from her. And so Anne McFall was last seen in 1967. So Anne was never reported missing, but her body was eventually found or what was left of it. At first, Fred denied that he had anything to do with it, but later on when he was in jail, he had a visitor come and he confessed to them that he had stabbed her to death following a violent argument. But after Anne was taken care of, Fred could invite Rena back into his home. And at first their relationship had improved, they were happy together, but eventually she decided to leave Fred again about a year after they got back together. And she decided to just leave her kids with Fred. But later on, she became very concerned about her daughters and the guilt just really got to her. So eventually she got up the courage to ask Fred, who was a very scary person, but she decided to ask him if she could get custody of the kids. And this was the last time that Rena was ever seen. Her body was found in 1994. And shockingly, this would actually be the 10th murder that Fred West committed. So now that Fred is clear of any women, he is on the market for a new woman. Fred first encountered Rosemary Letts in 1969, shortly after her 15th birthday. Yeah, he met her when she was 15. And in some of their initial conversations, they were already talking about And Fred found out that even though Rose hadn't yet had a boyfriend, that she was a very promiscuous and experienced person. He also decided that one of the ways he was going to win her over was by getting sympathy from her. He made up a lie that his ex-wife left him and left him with both of their children. He said he longed for a wife to fill that role for the kids and that he also wanted more children with someone else. So within weeks of meeting Fred, eventually Rose was convinced by him to become their nanny. And eventually Rose started falling in love with Fred and she decided to introduce him to her family. And when her family met him, they did not approve. They got bad vibes and they thought he was way too old for her. Remember, she's 15 at this time. And her parents ended up being so concerned that they actually went to social services about this. So in response to this, Rose was actually placed in a home for troubled teenagers. And Fred wasn't able to bite to keep her at his house because he was in jail at the time for 30 days for some fine. But as soon as Fred was out of jail, Rose moved right back in with him. Rose's father made one more attempt to get Rose to not be with Fred. And in February of 1970, Rose was examined by a police surgeon and they confirmed that Rose was pregnant. She was only 15 and pregnant with Fred West's kid. And on October 17th, 1970, Rose gave birth to their first daughter together and her name was Heather Ann. Two months after this, Fred was imprisoned for theft of car tires. He ended up serving six and a half months in prison. And during this time, Rose was 17 years old. She just turned 17 and was stuck with three daughters by herself while her husband is in jail. Now I'd like to say that she tried to be the best mother that she could, but that was not the case. She became extremely abusive of the three children. And over time, Rose's hatred for Charmaine just grew and grew. Fred's release date from prison was supposed to be June 24th. And on June 15th, Rose took the girls to go visit him. And this would be the last time that Fred would see Charmaine. Sometime shortly after they visited him in prison, Charmaine was killed by Rose. And it's not like Fred came home and was upset. I mean, he's a sicko. He was like, whatever, I don't really care. It's, she's not my daughter. And so he ended up burying her 
in their backyard, close to their back door. And around this time, they decided to move again, very close by this time, to 25 Cromwell Street. And this is a very famous house. Shortly after giving birth to their second daughter, Rose decided to become a prostitute, and she would advertise her services in a local magazine. And it seemed like Rose really preferred to have with women. Now, Fred wasn't left out of this. He was often invited to be part of threesomes with Rose and her clients. And eventually Fred got to the point where all he wanted was very rough and violent encounters. So the room that Rose would use for her work was called Rose's room. And what's absolutely sick, if this story can get any sicker, is they put holes into the walls of the room so that Fred could secretly watch into Rose's room when she was with her clients without them knowing, which is very, very illegal. Now, like we talked about, Rose's father, Bill, was protective of Rose in a way and did not want her to be with Fred. However, he was fine being with his daughter himself. He became one of her clients, and in her life, Rose had quite a few children. By 1983, she had eight children, and it is thought that at least three of them are not Fred's children. However, this didn't really bother Fred, and he gladly accepted those children as his own. Now, as you can imagine, Fred and Rose were not good parents to these eight children. And between 1972 and 1992, the West children were admitted to the accident and emergency department of local hospitals at least 31 times. And all of these injuries were explained as normal household accidents. By 1992, Fred and Rose ended up having 11 children in what they called their family of love, even though two of them had already been killed. However, around 1992, there were a lot of rumors going around and allegations that Fred had been his children. And because of this, police ended up raiding his house. When they did, they found out about Rose's prostitution services, and there was also a big collection of adult tapes some of them that featured children and people being tortured. So Heather was their oldest daughter together, the first daughter that Rose had. And she disappeared from the house in 1986. And this wasn't known for a long time, but the reason that they figured this out is Fred would actually make jokes to the other kids in the family about how their older sister was buried under their back porch and that if they didn't behave, they would end up dead and buried under the patio just like her. They finally were able to bring a search warrant to 25 Cromwell Street to Fred and Rose. And when they did, Rose was the one who answered the door and it said that when she saw the search warrant, she screamed, get Fred! In the early morning hours of February 25th, Fred went up to his oldest son who was getting ready for work and told him, look son, I really he said, look after mom and sell the house when I'm gone. And then he told him, I've done something really bad and I want you to go to the papers and make as much money as you can off of it. And shortly after this, the police returned to the house and they were ready to dig. And surprisingly, as soon as they showed up, Fred actually indicated that he wanted to be arrested. He said he needed to be held accountable for Heather's murder after all. So he was taken to the police station to provide a full confession and then he was arrested. And at this time, Fred was insistent that Rose had nothing to do with the murder. But three days after searching the property, they were still unable to find Heather's remains. And at that point, Fred kind of was like, hmm. And he started to change his story, but it didn't last long because on February 26, they did find a bone of a female in the backyard. So after they found Heather's body, they thought maybe Rose was in danger. They didn't realize how violent, terrible she was. So they put her into a safe house and they started recording everything that she said within this house. So only two hours after the remains were found, there was another gruesome discovery. They pulled out a couple more femur bones and soon they had three, which means that there was more than one person buried in that yard. So they gave Fred the opportunity to explain this bone and who it belonged to. And this is when he confessed to another murder, an 18 year old woman named Shirley Robinson. Shirley Robinson was a woman that Fred had an affair with in 1978 and he got her pregnant. And at this time she was eight months pregnant, so very sad. So by the end of that night on February 26th, Fred had confessed to two murders. So over time, they continued to press Fred for any more information. They felt like there were probably some more murders that he had committed. Eventually on March 4th, he caved and he finally said there's a 
load more. And by March 9th, only five days later, they had dug up nine bodies total. So now they know that Fred was a serial killer. And police had a feeling that there were even more bodies to be dug up. And so they came up with a plan to get Fred to tell them where the rest of them were. Fred had talked a lot about how guilty he felt about everything. He said that the spirits of the dead that he had killed haunted him in his life all the time. And so they gave him a can of red spray paint and he walks out there and he's looking at the ground communicating with the spirits and then he goes ahead and marks where the bodies were with red spray paint and sure enough the final ninth body was underneath that red x so let's go over the victims heather west allison chambers and shirley robinson were found in the back garden of the house linda gow was found underneath the floor in the bathroom on the opposite side of the house under the concrete in the cellar therese seidenthaler lucy partington juanita mott Shirley Hubbard, and last but not least, Carol Cooper were found. And after 55 days of digging, on June 7th, 1994, they found the body of Anne McFall. She was the only one that was not buried in the yard that we know of. Her body was actually the 12th and final body that was found. So you may be wondering how involved was Rose in all of this? And does she get away with it? Fred at this point is telling investigators that she had nothing to do with this. It was all him. But investigators really suspected otherwise. And on April 20th, 1994, Rose was arrested. So on June 30th, 1994, Fred and Rose were brought before the court. Fred was charged with 11 murders and Rose was charged with nine. And this was the first time that the couple had seen each other since Fred's arrest. And Fred was very happy to see Rose. And at one point he even reached out and put his hand on her shoulder, but Rose actually winced and shugged him off. And it's really unknown whether she was acting this way because she didn't want to, you know, go down with him or if she was actually mad at him and no longer loved him. Publicly, she wanted nothing to do with him. This really got to Fred and it made him very depressed in jail. While he was in prison, she also refused to respond to any letters that he sent her and reports were leaking to the press that Rose was very mad that she felt like Fred had taken everything from her and this actually Fred off a lot. He ended up withdrawing his previous confession, saying that he was the one to do everything. Now his story had changed again, and this time he said Rose was involved. He ended up accusing his wife of all of the murders, except for Anne McFall and for Rena. Fred became so depressed, he was delusional. He didn't really know what was going on and was telling them whatever he could grasping at strings, and unfortunately, he would never even make it to trial because on January 1st, 1995, Fred actually hanged himself in jail. So in the end, he was a coward. He was never truly punished for what he did. But Rose was, and she did go to trial, and they ended up finding Rose guilty of all 10 counts of murder. Rose was sentenced to life in prison, and the judge made it clear that she should never be paroled. And although she spent the rest of her life in prison, she always claimed that she is innocent. So after all of this in 1994, the kids that were left, that were still alive from their family were given new identities and help kind of readjusting back to the world. And to this day, Rose is still alive and she claims that she had nothing to do with the murders. So I guess we'll never fully know what happened on 25 Cromwell Street, but it was not good. That's it for me today, guys. Mm -hmm.